Good morning, Virgo. Hopefully everyone can hear and see me. It took a second for uh, YouTube to go live there. Great to see everybody. Um, hi, my name is Nicholas Ashball. Welcome to the Virgo reading for the month of October. Um, as always, we're going to be looking at all of the energies for the next six to eight weeks. Apollo just came out. I left a little snack for him. So after he has his snack, I'll bring him up here. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about uh, what's what the format's going to be uh, today, and then we're going to get into your channeled messages. Uh, so my name is Nicholas Ashbaugh, as I said. We're going to be looking at Virgo, and you can use this for your sun, your rising, and for your moon signs. You can also look on uh, behalf of someone else or for any part of your chart if you happen to know other things like Venus, et cetera. It works for all of that. And the format's changed a bit. We're going to do channeled messages at the beginning, the Celtic cross next, and, uh, and, and then we'll do the expanded forecast, health, wealth, love, and destiny. After all of that, then we're gonna go straight into new information, looking at blessings and blocks for the week ahead. A viewer's choice poll, which I will type in, uh, and let you take a look at, plus the soul path as, a, as you're voting on all of that, which is going a little bit deeper into some of the issues that I pick up on, kind of like a reader's choice, if you will. Uh, then we'll meditate and we'll do a final uh, card at the end. So basically I've taken out the review so that we can just have more of a, a nice fluid uh, energy. I've been doing that for about the past, you know, six signs and everybody likes it. So I hope you enjoy that. Let me also just talk a little bit about how I interact here. Um, basically, once I start talking, I go into a channeled state. But if you want to show support, uh, you can give a super sticker or super chat. And at the very end, I will say thank you. I usually don't acknowledge in real time just for that reason, because I don't want to interrupt the flow. Uh, but if you want to see more videos like this, a great way to do that is to click on the dollar sign right by the smiley face. And that will allow you to kind of interact. And again, I appreciate it. I see KK has already done that again. Anyone at the end, I will say thank you if you just stick around. Um, and I appreciate everybody that supports me, including all of the channel members. I see a lot of folks with uh, green colored names. All of those people support me for month to month. So thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to cover a lot of stuff here really quickly that I uh, basically write down on cards. And if you want to read the recap, Usually about one to two days after I'm live, I will post it on Instagram, Facebook, and on the community tab here on YouTube. So don't worry if you can't get it all down. I type it out. It takes a little bit of time, but you'll be able to find it. My uh, user handle across social media is Nicholas Ashball. I'm going to post a link to this right now so you'll be able to reference it. And then we're going to get started. So let me just post that link here. This is going to be my website and the links to my social media. The only place that I'm not Nicholas Ashbaugh is on Twitter where it's N Ashbaugh. So let me go ahead and pin that message and let's get started. All right, so I'd like to begin every reading with um, a message from spirit, a spirit totem. And today's spirit totem is the hare, the, the rabbit. And uh, let me talk a little bit about this. First of all, it's not the same as a rabbit. I said that it's really a uh, jackrabbit is part of that, but they're a little bit bigger. They have longer ears better uh, sort of ability to leap around. So they have um, more hind leg sort of energy. And uh, let me just show you a picture so I don't have to keep talking about it. So you can see right here, these really, well, that was interesting. It went to a <laughs> different picture. So you can see here all of the really big ears. And let's take a look here at maybe the hind legs where they, um, they leap a little bit. And you can tell again, a little bit more energy in this particular animal than you would see in a rabbit. So I lost that other picture, but another thing here that's kind of interesting is their mating ritual where they kind of get up and uh, do a little bit of boxing too. Uh, the other thing is some of them change colors like this one, the snowshoe hair. So it goes from gray to white, depending on the season. So we'll talk about this and its, um, it's connection to you as a totem right now. All right, so your spirit totem today is the hair. And again, not to be confused with the rabbit, even though one of the uh, species of hare is called jackrabbit. It's more just sort of a misnomer. They are larger, as I said, than rabbits. They have longer ears, longer legs, and a bigger body overall. They're, uh, they're, the one in particular that was really large that caught my attention was the European hare, weighing up to 4.5 kilograms or 10 pounds, reaching uh, 68 centimeters or 27 inches in height, or I'm sorry, in, um, in length. It's a pretty big rabbit that, uh, you know, Looking at my table here, this it would fill up a good portion of this table. So uh, I think that that's that's amazing. Usually we just think of these little fluffy things. So hairs are much bigger. Um, the size and scope is what I wanted to kind of bring into focus for you in your life right now. So things may be a little bit bigger, a little bit more detailed than you thought. 
And just as there's some confusion over the two types of animals, you wanna look at your own life and think, am I mixing something up? Am I seeing the big picture here? So really take a look at, when I talk about scope, it's about the complexity of a project, of a situation, of something that you're sort of dealing with right now. Make sure that you really feel that out and think, have I, have I underestimated or I have, and in this case, sometimes we conflate, confuse and kind of put the two together, separate things out and really see them for all of the, all of the tinier pieces that constitute the whole. And I think that's gonna be key for you. To me, this animal epitomizes the hermit as I was starting to do research on it. Just like um, my little puppy there was hermiting under the chair, uh, these rabbits like to have privacy and have safety. Uh, they're nocturnal mostly, solitary definitely, and they move closely to the ground, kind of pushing down their bodies. And I even read that they push their ears back so that they can avoid being seen by predators. So mostly they wanna stay out of the, um, the eye of, of anything really. If it's safe and everything's okay, maybe they pop their ears up and uh, we'll talk about it in a second, but their ears can actually rotate independently, uh, kind of like satellite dishes, they're very much tuned in. And that's something that uh, you, your sign should be focusing on as well this month. Wild hares can run up to 45 miles per hour or 20 uh, meters per second. So this is encouraging you to decide when and where you want to speed up the pace this month because you have the capacity to see things happen pretty quickly when you put your mind to it. It doesn't mean that the entire month is a sprint. We can't, you actually, life in general, if you're sprinting the whole time, it's not going to work. Want to come say hi, buddy? Um, you have to pick your moment just like Apollo did <laughs> to make things happen. So um, once you decide to make that leap, however, we see that we have uh, an ability here to go three meters, which is amazing, or about 10 feet at a time with a single jump, which I thought was really cool. Like the hare, you can cover a lot of ground quickly. Um, you just have to start moving like the fool. And one thing with the fool is just basically feeling the sense of not being afraid to get started. Uh, so once you get started, it feels like things happen quickly, but sometimes we are all right, Apollo just wanted to say, hey, and then goodbye. <laughs> He's like, get back to work, Dad. Um, they just really, uh, what I was going to say is uh, the hardest part sometimes is just finding inspiration, focus, and activating. So if you are procrastinating, if you are afraid, if you are trying to figure out, like, can I do this? Should I do this? Basically, this totem is coming through saying, don't be afraid. Uh, rabbits and hares tend to kind of, kind of be a little jittery. So I would say what you want to focus on is grounding yourself, feeling secure, taking that moment, taking that initial leap of faith. Things will start to happen faster. You'll also cover a lot of ground quickly. So the, the fear or the overthinking of this, kind of like we have a queen of wands in reverse, worrying about everything, it sends you down the rabbit hole basically, and you start to get, make things worse than it is. Uh, so don't, don't make things worse than they need to be. Back to the positive things with a, a hair. Hairs can see nearly panoramic, almost 360 degrees, not quite, but nearly. Um, and their independently swiveling ears can actually pick up any sort of predators or danger um, long before it comes through. And they can also hear at almost double our frequency when I was looking and trying to do the math. They definitely hear a lot of the lower frequencies that we can't and a little bit more in the higher frequency range. So much better than human hearing. Uh, and also when you take a look at those ears, it's no surprise that they can hear pretty darn well. Let's take a look again at the picture because I think that's one of the defining features when you're looking at a, uh, a jackrabbit versus a rabbit or a hare versus a rabbit is look at those ears. Like <laughs> it's almost like kangaroo, right? Uh, that's what it looks like to me if you just look at the, the face alone. So you want to really listen. We're gonna talk about this here as soon as I put my iPad down. Um, I, I think listen more than you speak this month because when you allow people to fill in the spaces, it's amazing what they, they say, what they reveal. So let them do the talking, let them do the heavy lifting. And one little tip that you can use is just to wait an extra five seconds or 10 seconds after someone talks Keep engaging with them. Don't just like let there be crickets. Just sort of hold the space, make them feel safe, smile, have uh, eye contact, and see if they have anything else. You can even say, do you have anything else that you want to say? Um, and let them talk. And then you can share what you have to say. But really make sure that uh, what happens when you give them that extra space is sometimes they get nervous and they just keep talking and then they'll share more information, which could help you. Or sometimes 
they want to make sure that it's okay and that you're engaged. And when they see that you are, then they open up and um, they just naturally want to share more. So either way, it's going to help you discover things without having to do as much work. Uh, really good interviewers on TV. If you've ever watched someone who's a news presenter or um, you know a reporter, there's some reporters that talk over the guest or the, the person that they're interviewing and they're missing things and it, it makes you upset as a, a viewer. You're like, ah, but they were onto something. I want to hear that. Um, a really good presenter holds space, lets them talk, and then waits and then and goes to the next um, question. So be like one of those great interviewers and just let someone have that space a little bit. Even though you have a lot to say and a lot to do, you're gonna learn, that person's gonna feel more supported and uh, it's kind of win-win at the end of the day. Now, if someone's having a hard time listening to you, this is where it is okay to kind of speak up and say, listen, I've, I've done a lot of listening on my part. It's time for me to, uh, I have some things that I'd like to say. And I, I can't remember which sign I was talking to, but I had somebody once where they were trying to cut me off. They said, are you finished? I said, no, I'm not. Actually, I've only just begun. Let me finish my, my thought process because I had a, a rude person on the other, uh, <laughs> on the other side of the line. And um, they didn't want to hear. They said, I, I don't want to listen to this. I said, yeah, but this is a problem. Uh, it was I was speaking to uh, someone that was a manager somewhere else that needed to take care of something. And they didn't want to do their job. And I said, it's too bad. It's a safety issue and kind of kept going into that. So um, sometimes you have to advocate for your own space, especially if someone's dismissive, they ignore you, they don't return your calls or emails. And this was all of the, the case with this. So um, speak up if you're not being listened to, but if someone's trying to talk, also give them space, it's give and take. So it's a little bit of a dance this month when it comes to communication, but you can do it. Listening is more powerful than speaking. All right. Uh, they're also, uh, hairs are also very good at, like I said, seeing the 360 degree vision, almost being able to see what's going on behind you. Um, watch what's going on. Also, don't underestimate the fact that other people may have a pulse on what's going on as well. So if you're in an office space and uh, you're gossiping, or if you are in a place that you think is private and you're sharing something that doesn't really need to be out there in public, assume that it will get out there. And in fact, I'm skipping to the very last card that I got, but your actions and words will travel fast. Basically, Spirit showed me something going viral, almost like on a social media platform. So just it's just a modern symbol that they used with me. So just be careful. Assume that it will be shared or recorded or it might actually catch on. On the bright side, you have the ability to really make a splash. Um, you just have to be careful. And that's the key thing. I think a good rule of thumb is to assume that everything you say is going to get back to your parents, your grandparents, or again, whoever it is, your boss, and then only say things that are going to be worth sharing when you're out in public. Okay. Um, you also might be able to see something that you've been missing for a while. The latter part of this said, take the two of swords blinders off uh, or blindfolds. If you look at the traditional illustration, we see a woman blindfolded with her hands um, like this and the swords in either direction, usually two paths behind her. And she is paralyzed in fear or indecision. And sometimes she's not looking at what's right in front of her because if she just opened her eyes, she would see a path or a symbol or a sign to help her. So. The fool is saying, just start moving. The two of swords here is saying, let go of this and just kind of let go of the fear of taking one path or another um, because doing nothing is worse than doing something sometimes. So um, because you're never going to get anywhere, you're just going to be stationary. So listen, do your homework and then make your best educated decision based on the information and data in front of you. And that's all you can ever do. Okay. Also, um, like my puppy, who's now over here, um, who he always twitches his nose when he's out in um, public, when he's outside. Even if I put him out on my patio, the nose is constantly twitching. Rabbits are the same way. Uh, that keen sense of smell can actually sniff out danger, uh, you know, several feet or yards or miles away. So um, what you want to focus on is doing the same in your own life. You're gonna be trusting your intuition to pick up on both opportunities. They use that for sniffing out food, so that would be the opportunity, and then preventing some sort of a danger from coming into their life as well. So your third eye and your own sort of sensory perception, extrasensory perception, is gonna come in and help you with the same things. I've talked about uh, an example where I had to step into a situation, this was one company that I worked at, where uh, I had like, disgruntled employees that interviewed me 
And um, I could tell that it was going to be trouble. I took the job anyway. It was more trouble than I thought it would be. But I remember the interview thinking, oh, my gosh, these people are so not happy with their job. Do I really want to step into this? And uh, my gut told me I didn't. But uh, at the moment, I thought that that was the only option. I needed a job. I wanted to transfer and do something different. And I thought, OK, let's give this a go. But um, but I kind of didn't listen to myself and I regretted that. I've had the same situation. Usually it happens with work, but I remember one company that I walked in and I had uh, I had been freelancing there and then I decided to sign, uh, you know, short term. Or, well, I decided to become full time, but in my head I thought six months, maybe. I ended up being there eight months, but I was unhappy. I just even looked at the logo, which kind of had um, a snake-like resemblance. And I'm like, why am I here? There were so many signs and symbols all over the place. So focus on it, whether it's a date and you go out on the date and you think there's no chemistry, but you agree to a second date, or you agree to take a job that you know you shouldn't take, or you decide to go to school, but you're studying something that you don't want to study. Don't do these things. Um, take a, take a, pa a pause for a moment and explore left, right, up, down. There's something else that you can do, and it's going to save you time and energy, and you won't be looking back and thinking, gosh, I knew better. You already know better. Trust it. OK, you'll save yourself a lot of time by doing that. The last piece uh, that we're going to look at with uh, and I should say I'm going to rewrite this. It's jackrabbits, not rabbits. Um, so some jackrabbits uh, actually shed their skin and change their color of their coats. The snowshoe one was an example. So just like they have this sort of shape shifting capability, you too can do this um, in your own life where you can it really has to do. I put here wardrobe. Thinking about dressing accordingly, so important. And I think a lot of us right now have um, probably, we can't fit into some of our wardrobe or, or we haven't bought anything for a while that's appropriate for a special event or for dressing up. So make sure that you have like one outfit for some good news for a special event. And it actually is a way of manifesting that too. So get something, you don't have to spend a lot of money, get something on sale or something and put it in the closet. Uh, and get ready for something positive because if you're underdressed or not sort of appropriately showing up, that could hinder your possibilities there. And the other thing here is just your ability to blend in. There's a little bit of shape shifting energy, or I like that it changes or has like a little bit of a metamorphosis depending on season. So um, you can blend in if you need to, you can pop out if you need to as well, and you should have something, uh, you know, to, to dress according to a special event. So make sure that you have that that nice outfit, that nice dress or whatever, ready uh, for the good news. All right, let's go into some fun stuff that I was picking up on in dreams and meditation. So occasionally, and I'm, I'm sure many of you have had this, maybe not all of you, but many of you, if you've had a dream where you're flying, for me, it was kind of uh, a combination of, I was able to do like levitation. I was, I was meditating and kind of in a yoga pose and going up, then I was able to kind of walk, walk on the air, or walk on the clouds. And then I was also just able to float up and fly around kind of like uh, Superman or Wonder Woman or whatever. So uh, what I'm seeing for you is this ability to go into a sort of higher space energetically. Because when you meditate, that's actually what it feels like. Um, so uh, think about getting a bird's eye view, um, picking another path if you need to, and definitely reaching and thinking and dreaming as high as you possibly can. So reach higher. Don't let others anchor or pull you down. This could be mom, dad, or boss, especially when they're like, parents, you can't do that. You won't make any money. You don't have any talent. This is all just their projections of fear. They don't want you to do it because they're afraid that you may not have it. But it's actually not a fact that they're stating it's a fear. And so, uh, and a boss too. I don't think you're ready for this. Well, that's your opinion. Um, how will you know if you don't try? This is what I would counter them with. Um, I would say that's your opinion. It's not a fact. And people can work on skills, and this is my dream, and, and I'm going to go further on something that I enjoy versus something that you want me to do. Or if, you know, and with it's a boss, if, again, you're not giving me the opportunity. So if you're setting me up to fail, or if you're assuming failure before I try, then that's a sign of poor leadership. Um, again, these are reasons that I'm not in a corporate environment <laughs> anymore, because I, I got tired of playing uh, the games associated with it. So for you, speak up, find a path, find someone that is receptive to your energy. And if you can, uh, if you can find that connection, then magic will happen. If you can't, it's a clear sign from the universe, universe that there's some stagnation happening wherever you are right now. OK. And for those of you that feel like you're stuck in this, because I saw it in the, in the chat, uh, 
a lot of us get in this habit of going from the same relationship to another relationship that's a template of that, the same job to another job. It's just the sort of like we keep repeating it. And I had, um, uh, oddly enough, it wasn't a psychologist, it was a nutritionist. I was going through some um, some issues with just kind of like having a lower immune system. And this was a long time ago, like 15 or 18 years ago or something. But she said, why do you keep doing the same jobs? Because that's what's causing your body to be sick. It's not so much your diet. It's not so much exercise. Um, it's this toxic place that you're working at. Or this, this you know, for some of you, it can be a, a relationship that you're in. And at the time, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it took me like another 12 years or something after that to, to, to finally realize she was right. And uh, so I'm sharing that experience with you so that you know that if you change your, um, if you change out that toxic energy, you'd be surprised how far you can go, how fast you can go, how high you can go. And that's what we were getting with the jack rabbit or the hare, being able to you know, leap really far past all of these sort of um, obstructions in front of it. And then also that feeling of levitating and going higher. So lift yourself up. And if people are constantly dragging you down, you're in the wrong crowd. You're not with the right people. Um, and you can do a lot better and you deserve a lot better. And that's why you're here today because you're gonna move past these blocks, okay? And if there's anyone in your life that needs some help with that as well, um, be there for them. The immune system, the body in general is going to show up and, and ask for help. Um, so I talked in one of the collectives, I think about how sometimes people that experience a lot of stress or sadness, they're gonna have issues sometimes in the heart and the lung area because you're holding it in just like the four of pentacles. People that get really angry or have a short temper, sometimes they have things like a stroke or um, problems with, again, the blood because it's going and circulating through the body too fast. So blood pressure, stroke, um, migraines, aneurysm, things like that. And um, some you don't even have to understand anything to, to know that this will, like if you're really stressed out, you're just gonna hold it in your in your shoulders or you're gonna clench your jaw. So your body sometimes just has to find a way to get, get it out. So whether it's you know pain or actually disease, pay attention to where it's at and go to the source. Um, sometimes we just put like a Band-Aid on these problems rather than going to the source, which could be, like I said, someone in your life that's driving you a little crazy, a job that's not quite supporting you in the way that it needs to, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so this is your chance to go above, look around, find another path, stay in that higher energy. Okay, good. Next piece. Um, these were a lot of different, it's almost like I got vignettes. Um, so I'm going to do my best to pull all of these dreams and meditations together for you. Uh, I wanna start first with peer pressure. Whether you're young or old, stand up and avoid the peer pressure. Um, there's a special piece, particularly for parents of children. Uh, what I was seeing was a kid being sort of pushed into doing something that was dangerous and didn't make sense. Um, so keep an eye on that. But as an adult, we have the same problem. We have friends in our life that just kind of get us to stay up late on a work night or you know do something that just doesn't make sense spend money or they're enablers in different ways that you know you just know that you need to do better so peer pressure across the board think of like six of wands reversed um pushing you pressuring you to do something or nine of wands reversed or um uh, three of cups reversed sort of feeling like you have to meet up to other people's expectations you don't do what's right and know that uh, I, I know i just put this in a recent uh show here, but like it, what's popular isn't always what's best. So I think it's important for you to do what's positive, what feels right, not necessarily what's popular. If there is someone uh, in your like, okay, this is specifically a piece also for parents, but then we can apply this across the board. If you have like a middle child and, and, and you have a younger child that needs to be watched, don't put the middle child in charge uh, right now. I feel like there's too much pressure. If you're at a job and you have an employee that doesn't have enough managerial skills, but you need someone to do the job, give them the training first and have them shadow someone. What I saw was someone in over their head, trying to make boss or mom and dad happy, but not succeeding. And in fact, not being able to stop some of those peer pressure things that I saw. Um, so you want to make sure that if someone isn't, experienced enough, don't pressure them into doing something. I was just talking about the reverse where you might feel like you can do something and you want the support, that's fine. But if it's actually the reverse and you're forcing someone who's uncomfortable doing something into that role, 
you've seen it happen in, in life. A lot of times people are pushed or promoted into a position that they can't handle. And they, you can see the sort of fear in their eyes because they're, they're feeling so much uh, fear of failure. So don't do that. Don't do that to someone that you are working with or someone that's in your charge if you're a guardian. One other thing that's a piece of this, if there's anything in your um, home that you that is a safety issue for, for a child, you need to get rid of it. I can't really get into all the specifics of what it was, but it felt like you needed to lock something up or give something away. So if there's something dangerous, um, again, just maybe like a tool or something, you know, in the shed or something like that, make sure that shed is locked up or if there is something dangerous, it shouldn't be there at all, okay? That was one other message that my guides had uh, and that I need to share with you. So those of you that make that, that makes sense with, take care of it. For the rest of us, if there's something in our house too that we just kind of put off on repairing, maybe it's a, you know, a leaky faucet or it's a, you know, an air conditioner that's making a weird sound or smoked or something. Don't, don't put it off. Cause what I see is that that's going to exacerbate and you'll end up kind of having an issue pop up. So uh, do an audit of your house, get rid of anything that is dangerous, get uh, fix anything that needs to be fixed and really just kind of like firm it up. It doesn't matter if you have kids or not like me, you could have a pet and you need, to make, you need to make sure that he can't get into certain cabinets and things like that. So just making the house more um, safe for everybody in it is gonna be important. The next thing was really interesting. Um, I, I saw someone just, just basically caught in a lie. And as they were saying the words, the, the person looked in their eyes, they said, you're lying, just tell me the truth. So one thing that I want you to understand is it's going to be a lot easier if you just say what you need to say and deal with that fallout versus not being truthful because at that point it's going to be hard to get the person's faith back or their, or their, um, their trust back. So tell the truth. And if someone tells the truth to you that you didn't want to hear, if you can't forgive them, be open and, and say, I appreciate your honesty. I need some time to deal with this. I can't just be immediately okay with it, but I'm so glad you told me. Um, because then that lets them know that um, they can they they can feel safe with you. Say, so I'm not angry, but I have to I have to process this. That's a fair way of um, of being in the moment and not sort of just overreacting. Okay. The next piece was show basically demonstrating or walking the walk. But uh, we're talking a lot this month about not necessarily verbally communicating, listening, then talking. And this piece is about actually showing what you need to do, not necessarily just saying it. So um, actions speak louder than words would be another way for me to put that. But the way the guides gave it to me was show it, don't say it. Um, the other thing here, as we're talking about this, is your actions and words will, will travel. This could be good. This means that if you're doing something really well, this could get back to you know the important decision maker, and then they're going to re reward that. If you're not doing something that you should be doing, that also gets out and you don't want that. So there's this sort of viral possibility. Let's make it good news. Um, good and bad news travel fast. So let's let's go for the good stuff, okay? Overall, I like this. There's a lot of tuning in energy with the hair. It's a super psychic symbol, basically with the ears way up towards the heavens that can kind of like tune into stuff. So really pay attention. Um, know that you can create momentum. You can create movement and it will go faster and further than you think. Um, just that first step is necessary. Uh, when it comes to being able to do something, you have to see it. So get above the negativity around you, see the possibility, and surround yourself with people that exude the same positivity. Don't repeat patterns, which we said. And, um, you know, there's a, as we were talking about with stepping into something new, you need to be set up for success. So if someone assumes that you're going to fail, you're not going to have a good chance of succeeding. If you throw someone into the deep end and they've never been taught how to swim, that's not going to go well either. So make sure that you're advocating for the support that you need. Make sure that if you have someone in your life that lacks the skills or the training, that you give them that. Even if they're smart, even if they have good instincts, um, instincts alone can't save you sometimes. You have to have a little bit of training, a little bit of support, at least as a human. Animals kind of have everything that they need baked in. But we are not animals, we are humans, we're sentient beings and we need a little bit more guidance. So uh, make sure that you're getting that and make sure that people around you are also receiving that. All right, let's take a look now at the cards. We're gonna um, look at the next six to eight weeks with this, see what's coming through. And uh, let me just turn the camera down and get started. If you just joined again, you can look at this for your sun, your rising and for your moon sign, uh, as well as other aspects of your chart.
There's our jackrabbits. <laughs> Interestingly enough, that was the mating ritual. So we have two of two of pentacles here. If I did this deck, it might have been on the two of cups, but I like this still. Right. Let's take a look at everything here and see what the messages are here. Let me just double check all my settings here. All right. So we have the vessel card here in your, um, your catalyst position. The catalyst position is a way for you to stay in that highest possible energy for the month, not to kind of get off path and also to create action. So the vessel to me is like an ace of cups, almost a chalice basically. And with this sort of opportunity or this cup that's kind of coming out into the universe here one of the things that you want to think about is am i open to receiving am i also offering things to people that i want to connect with so there is this sort of reciprocity energy giving taking being able to receive being open to receive being uh, grateful when you do receive practicing gratitude um, thinking positive things about yourself. I can do this. I am open to this. I am ready for this, etc. All of those things are going to be good. And there may be something really nice that is presented your, your way. New love, because we did get the lovers here. Um, and we have like the star card, some really nice things here. So I feel like if you're open to receiving something, you have a very attractive energy. In fact, right smack dab at the center, we have the sun and we have the lovers. You can't get much better than those two for attraction. Um, so let's start with the sun card. So this sun card was reversed, but it's so beautiful. And it is almost exactly what I was feeling in dreams last night where I was rising above. Um, those are my favorite kind of dreams where you're flying because you actually are astrally projecting, okay? So one of the things that you can focus on in your own life right now is seeing yourself at the finish line already, seeing the, the final product or the final goal being manufactured or um, coming into fruition. And imagine that you're just kind of projecting yourself out there. And then from that vantage point, pull yourself to that. And we'll do maybe some of that in the meditation where you can pull yourself in the right direction because that's basically what this card is saying. Your charisma, your, um, your sort of just overall bubbly energy can also go a really long way or really far away. So just kind of put that positivity and view that into everything that you're doing and thinking. Uh, finding your power, solar plexus is right around here. So your heart space is here, your belly button's here, it's right around that belly button area. Um, so a lot of times this comes through for relationships with mom or dad, or uh, a friend in your life that has a lot of power, brother or sibling maybe, um, someone that really has a close tie to you. So what, we, what you're doing this month a little bit is unplugging that energy and putting, putting it back into you. So rather than giving way too much to everyone, you're going to recharge your battery so that you can lift yourself up. As a caretaker, especially um, uh, if you're a parent or if you're taking care of an elderly parent or if your spouse is sick, et cetera, et cetera, your child. If you, if you have someone in your life that requires a little bit more, um, definitely take care of them, but don't do it at the expense of losing your own health. So you wanna make sure that you hire some help if you need to, babysitter, caretaker, nurse, et cetera, so that you can do some things for yourself so that you're not burning yourself out. For the rest of us, it's about not underestimating your power speaking up, finding that fire within you, and that's gonna help. Because people see that as an attractive force when you have a sense of confidence, like I can do this, I will do this. We have the lovers here. Um, so right off the bat, for those of you that are looking to heal um, a relationship or find a relationship, we have two auspicious symbols at the center. The sun shows me a really attractive force, but for some of you, you may be in a cycle of finding someone who is a little bit controlling. So when we have emperor, empress, or the sun reversed, sometimes it's someone who's very, very much focused on themselves. It's a selfish card. So um, this is a chance for you to see that you matter. You're part of that equation. 
Once you have that together, then you're gonna call in a partner that sees you as an equal, okay? I like it. The lover's energy, even if you're not focused on love at all, let's say you're retired, you're divorced, you're just not interested in putting energy in love, um, you still have this ability to connect with people. So use it in your business. Use it in other aspects of your life where your charm, because these are two very charming cards, can uh, really go a long way. This can be a child in your life. I mentioned that someone younger may need some extra support. It can be your inner child if you're single and um, don't have children. It can also be someone in your, your extended family that's younger, but I'm looking at a child or an inner child that needs a little bit of nurturing. So put the love there, okay? Let's focus on your deep past here. So in this particular, in this particular deck, wands are um, bows and arrows are swords. So the nine of arrows is the nine of swords, but it's kind of a cool one here. Um, the caption reads dedication. And normally we would see someone that was trying to deal with fears and, and feeling like they're overwhelmed. We see someone here picking up the pieces. Um, I've always wondered when I watch a movie like The Hunger Games, um, how is she keeping her quill uh, filled with all those arrows? Um, you gotta go eventually and pull the arrows and put them back in there. Um, so this is about cleaning up the mess in your life, not getting stressed out, taking it one step at a time, one arrow at a time because all of those things that you went through, all the, all the mess around you, it was kind of a learning experience. You're gonna be fine. You need to take care of yourself and kind of focus on um, building up your own defenses too. So in your body, this is about making sure that you get enough sleep, that you're recovering from anything if you've been sick. Um, gentle and easy does it. Um, how is your sleeping right now? What are your sleeping habits like? Making sure that if, um, if you haven't I talk about this whenever Nine of Swords comes through, but making sure that you've maybe replaced your pillows. If you have a mattress that's over 10 years old, by, by all means, replace that. Um, and also just the general environment in your bedroom. If I have a bunch of nightmares or if I, if something wakes me up, if I see like a, a ghost or something like that, I, it's a sign that I need to clean my environment. So then I go through and I literally clean it. I spiritually clean it with smudging and I rearrange things if I need to, because once you open the space up, Darker energy doesn't like clean spaces. That's why there's not a lot around me and behind me because I need to have this very open for higher frequency energy. So um, you can do the same by just clearing out, give away some items if you need to in your bedroom. So sanctify the beds, bedroom space and, and the sleeping space, um, take care of your body and then pick up the pieces one at a time, whatever whatever's out of, out of sync in your life, this is, uh, this is a chance to synchronize it, okay? Now we have the other, another nine here, nine of pentacles, which is really good. And this is in your recent past here. So what this is showing you is independence, sustainability, power. We have two snakes in that, the Ouroboros and then another snake on his, um, let's see, it'd be his, his left hand because I'm looking at this reverse when I show it to you. Um, so what I see for you is that you're off to a good start this month. Even if financially things aren't where you want them to be, what I see with this is a richness and an ability to kind of like pull in those opportunities. Don't be afraid to ask for help. With the lovers and the nine of pentacles, you have the ability to find someone who will help you out. You're not alone. Um, it's just a matter of like picking up the phone or Googling or doing some research and I see some good things coming through for you, okay? Um, one thing with the nine of pentacles can be such fierce ind independence that sometimes you say no to something that you should say yes to. So if someone in your life is giving you this vessel, this opportunity, a way out, um, um, a life jacket or whatever to kind of get through the situation and you say no, think about why you're saying no. Is it fear? Is it stubbornness? Or is there a legitimate reason that you don't feel good about accepting that? All of these things are things to consider because so far you have really great cards. The only thing there is that sort of fear-based card, Nine of Swords and the Deep Pass. All right, so um, let's go to the next card here. We're gonna be looking at the Hierophant and it's a really interesting card in this particular deck. Um, it's called the Ancestor. We see uh, what looks like a drum perhaps. Um, what I would say with the Hierophant is creating order in your life is really, really important. Maybe marching to the beat of your own drum is gonna be really important. Um, Hierophant energy is great. It is leadership, it is structure, and it shows me that when you step into that role, people wanna follow. So. It, Based on the fact that there are no followers here, um, what we're gonna say is, this is a month here about leadership, but for some of you, the beginning phases of leadership can feel a little lonely. It feels like you're talking to yourself. Uh, when you do anything new, 
whether it's like a singer and you put out your first album and nobody's quite getting it yet and you're performing in gigs and things, or if you're doing YouTube and talking to yourself for a little bit, um, it takes time to kind of find that audience. So keep doing what's authentic, keep being yourself, trust that the followers, that the group, that the new, maybe even the new chosen family that you're trying to find if you just move somewhere, they will find you. You don't have to bend to, uh, to meet them uh, 100%. It's kind of like halfway, meet, meet halfway. You don't have to change yourself, okay? Trust your, that your authenticity is the attractive force, all right? It's upright, it's in the crowning position, I like it. The, the only thing that I would say with this is it is a very traditional energy. So one thing that you wanna look at this month is just because it's tried and true doesn't mean it's the only way. So make sure that you're entertaining all possibilities, not just the guaranteed ones. Uh, one thing that you've noticed here even is I like to, I'm always trying new things. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I remember uh, like three or four years ago, I did some videos where I just use intuition and I use no cards and people were so upset. <laughs> I think now that the, you basically know that I, I have a combination of both skills. So some videos I can just use my intuition and you shouldn't get upset because that's actually even richer, but I take risks. So I knew that that wasn't popular and I did this. I've tried meditations, but people don't show up. So I just do a mini one at the end. You experiment, you try different things, right? Um, nothing lost by trying something. If you don't try something though, you'll never know what could exist. So take a leap of faith, try something different, push yourself a little bit because it's a very traditional energy that I see in your headspace. All right, um, looking at near future, we have the five of wands here. Um, this particular five of wands, we see an archer and um, I, uh, well, kind of an archer. Yes, because he's also carrying um, a staff here in the background. I would say five of wands is interesting because what it's encouraging us to do is to not get stuck in the weeds, to kind of rise above everything else that's kind of holding us back or keeping us in the past. So one of the things that you want to do is make sure that if you're stuck in a group where they're constantly trying to control you, that you kind of have this energy of the archer where you're you're saying, you know what, I have a bigger vision for this. I'm not gonna get pulled into this sort of, again, environmental energy is really affecting a lot of you this month. So make sure that you're, you're spending some time with that maybe choice friend who is positive, who is encouraging, who isn't just a yes person, but has this sort of ability to say, yeah, let's, let's see where that's going. Or I can see why you say that. So positivity and rising above and taking aim towards your goal, not getting lost in the minutia. I think all of these things are really important. Okay. Let's move on to you right now. Um, how you're feeling, how you're coming across. And we have the page of cups, another vessel card here. So that, and this basically says page of vessels here, and we have the otter energy. Um, and then we have the vessel here. So two vessels, this is like an ace and this is the page. And the page is really about sending and receiving and doing something with that ace that we got earlier. So yes for love. For those of you that are looking to focus on love, I'll be doing it in just a moment here on the expanded forecast, but this is a very appealing card to come through for you. Um, so you may be looking at an otter thinking, that's not me, but it is a kind of playful energy, a kind of building energy. And um, what I would say for you is how are you uh, receiving and, sorry, that was the keyboard. How are you receiving and also kind of communicating or um, working with somebody when it comes to what they give you emotionally. Uh, are you pushing, are you, are you kind of like standoffish? Are you having a hard time keeping eye contact? Um, are you insecure, uncertain of yourself? All of these things are coming through to kind of help you be um, stronger and, uh, and not sort of like overlook a really great possibility. It looks like people are interested in you. So this could be a job offer, this could be a date, this could be a chance to hang out with a friend. We're getting an invitation with this card, um, but I'm not sure if you're receiving the invitation just yet. So be open, be curious, um, you know, but don't be overly cautious because the hair, thankfully Apollo has been with me long enough that he doesn't jump anymore. But back in the day, if I dropped something, he would just like scram. So it takes time to, <laughs> to, to build up that, that trust, but Build up some trust, get to know the person, but don't necessarily just run at the first sight of anything, okay? This is, a, this is about kind of having more playful energy that you would have here with the otter, okay? And yeah, my puppy was um, a rescue, so he's fine now. He, he feels like he's spoiled. I even put like a little blanket on the ground for him so he can hang out behind me. Um, so he's, he's in a good space now. But just like if you've been wounded like Apollo was, it takes time and he's now been with me four years. Um, so at this point, he knows 
he knows the schedule. He knows what I'm doing. When I bring out the singing bowl, he knows a walk is coming soon. So um, give yourself time, give other people time to recover as well. But I see something good and I don't want you to miss it just because of fear, all right? Let's take a look now at what's going on around you. Um, I love this particular version of judgment. So we have the great bear. She's guarding the entry to a new path. There's an Aurora Borealis behind her. Um, she looks a little scary, but it's not that scary. Um, you never know if that bear is just sort of like wanting to play or, or more. Um, judgment card in general. Let's go to Rider Waite Smith, then we'll talk about the, the bear that's guarding that. Um, in general, if I see judgment in reverse, uh, what this means to me is that there's an understanding of the necessary action, but there is fear or disbelief going on in your head. So what this means is that many of you are waiting for permission or an outward sign to confirm your intuition. This could mean that you know that you want to, um, you know, take this leap of faith. Maybe you are going to create something new in your life, build a house, start a job, move across to country or move to a different country. Um, maybe this is about proposing or asking someone out or divorcing someone. Big decisions usually with judgment. Um, judgment is already there. You've, you've understood it. Justice is weighing it out. Um, sometimes it can be serving it, but usually it's weighing it depending on where its placement is. But judgment means the decision has been made but not accepted. So work on accepting this higher decision that's coming through and know that the bear could actually be you blocking yourself from entering this portal. This usually uh, in other decks can also be a rebirth card. I believe in the Druid Craft deck, we actually see like a little baby on this card coming out of the other side. So um, a lot of the Druid based ones have really cool in, uh, imagery on this one. So once you're able to do that, then there's this moment of, ah, this is, I, well, I was just afraid of starting something new. And I think that for many of you is what's going on. This is peer pressure. This is doing something that you know you shouldn't do as well. So I mentioned that, you know, I was given the visual of kids pushing someone to do something that was dangerous or wrong. Um, we get this as adults too. So just stand up to the peer pressure. Don't let them, um, don't let them do that. You know exactly what you need to do and you know exactly what you don't want to do and trust that. Okay. So a decision needs to be accepted. It feels like it's already made. Someone might be waiting to hear you say the words, um, whatever is holding you back. It feels like by the end of this month, you have to um, take some action on that and you have to get the needle moving on that. All right. So that's the main thing here. Uh, let's take a look now at your opportunities. We have the two of pentacles. Like I said, it was a curious card. It's reversed, but hello, Jack Rabbits. Hello, Hares. It's exactly what we were um, looking at in our channeled messages. And this, because I did some research, I didn't even have time to talk about it. Uh, when I'm, um, by the way, I believe it's called a Jack. Weird names that we use for um, <laughs> for the different version, versions of the animal. Female hare and a Jack is a, a male uh, Jack Rabbit. Anyway, um, anyway, so this little Jack and Jill moment here. It could also be Jill and Jill and Jack and Jack since we're progressive on this channel. Um, it's basically this sort of are you interested ritual. The two of pentacles um, is basically um, making a choice. It's a difficult choice, a balancing act. Um, with the six of pentacles, which is not shown here, you can basically do everything you want, but it takes time. It takes, you're going to have to stretch it out a little bit. The two of pentacles is saying you're going to have to actually make a choice here. You're going to make the right choice because your symbol came through here in the tarot cards and the rabbit, the jack rabbit or the hare is very good at picking up on, is it dangerous? Is it good? Should I do this? Does it feel right? All of that. So somebody is getting your attention, the lovers, they're interested in connecting with you. You have some sort of a really attractive energy that's pulling them forth. Um, you have to sort of figure out, is this someone that I want to associate with? Is this a good connection? Um, and is this worth my time and energy investment since we're looking at an investment card? So maybe I understand why they chose the, the jackrabbits here because you don't have to accept. You can rebuff that, you can say no. But should you accept it, some really good things can happen because we have the lovers at the center and we have the star, which I'll be talking about in a moment as the outcome. Um, you, have to, you have to pick a path, you have to make a decision and you're gonna be okay. When you take away one of those pentacles, you have an ace and you're gonna be able to do something great with that. So make a choice, start the movement. We have a jackrabbit. It showed me that things are gonna go further, faster, et cetera. When I look at um, the viewers, uh, the reader's choice here, I'm gonna, one of the things that I wanna look at is resources. So 
I'm going to automatically put that in the soul path um, because I want to look at a little bit more with resources since I'm just seeing the, um, the two of pentacles. So we'll automatically look at that to make sure that there's not something that's being missed. All right, final card. Uh, I always love the star. Those of you that watch, it's pretty much my favorite card. The reason it is my favorite card is because um, I love stars and it is representative of your highest self. And usually in the star card, we see someone who has um, kind of like this sort of divine energy. They're not wearing any clothes, just like you would see in a Greek statue because they have nothing to hide. Um, this particular one, it's called the pole star. So many of you are following your own North star, your own path. Um, and everything is going to come into focus when you tune into that pole star, into your North star. Um, it's your, not for everyone, it's a little different. Unlike, you know, Polaris, it's, it's not quite that for all of us. Each of us has an inner calling and an inner path. But once we go down that path, really exciting things start to happen for you. And you'll notice that maybe you get more attention and more support. So right now we need you to take the dimmer version of yourself and amp up the brightness. And instead of holding back to be vulnerable, to put yourself out there, to really allow all of those true colors to shine. Okay. So um, I love it. And this is a combination of two cards, really, when you look at it. It is the fool, because we see like a wanderer on this one or a vagabond. And it is the star as well. And I love the forest energy in this. So um, you have that path in front of you. The question is, if not now, then when are you going to go after whatever your big dream, whatever your big vision is, right? So hopefully that helps. We take a quick drink and then we're going to expand this forecast looking at health, wealth, love, and destiny. If you just joined, a reminder also that you can check out my weekly readings. If you want day-by-day -day stuff, it's something new that I've done. It's pinned to the top of my, um, my channel. And all of the readings for September are already up. I'm doing for October right now. So you can go to my main page for information. All right, let's look at health. We're looking at mind, body, and spirit. And exactly what we were talking about earlier, where it was um, using your third eye to kind of sense things out, sniffing out danger, but through this. Um, thank you, angels. I choose to trust my intuition and trust your guidance. Um, amen to that one. So when you step into a situation, what does your heart say? What does your third eye say? How do you feel after you leave a room talking to someone, spending time with someone? Does it feel like you've been lifted up or does it feel like the air has been popped out of a balloon? Um, that's usually a really key litmus test for understanding if it's worth your time, if it's worth your energy. So, um, and I've had people too, where it's sort of like, they just drain everything. So usually bosses or really kind of people in, a, in their life that are going through a difficult time, maybe a friend, but when that happens, you have to have boundaries. So you can set an artificial deadline if you need to, and just say, I'm so sorry. I have, I have another call that I need to make, or I have an errand that I need to run, or let's pick this up tomorrow. Uh, I just need to, uh, I need to do something. You don't have to go into what it is. Put a boundary in there so that you're not getting uh, basically drained. For the rest of you, don't say yes to something you don't want to say yes to. If someone asks you out on a date and you don't like them, say no. If a, if a job opportunity is offered and it doesn't feel right, push back, ask for something better or say no. Trust yourself, okay? Trust your body too. So if you are feeling that something is off and it's not coming through in a test or the doctor's not listening to you, get a second opinion. Always get, um, I think, a, good, a second opinion if you're gonna make a big decision with health. I was talking about recently, I just had a very, very tiny, tiny fracture in my foot. Um, so, so light that I don't need to wear anything, but I could tell something was wrong. And initially the doctor said, no, it looks great. X-ray is fine. I said, no, it's not. A week later, I still had pain. So um, they found out they had to do an MRI. And that's an example of you just following your body. You don't even need intuition. It just doesn't feel right. Um, I was shown intuitively that there was a break, but I don't, like I said before, I don't always have to share those things. Um, I would just say, no, it doesn't feel right. A doctor will listen to you if you say that. So trust your vibes, trust what you're feeling. If something's off in your body, get the necessary test, get a second opinion and take care of yourself, take care of the problem. Specifically looking at the cards for additional insight. Um, so if there's something that you need or want to do, um, and it's time. It's this is the month to do it. Don't put it off anymore. So if you've been thinking about, you know, 
going back to the gym, changing up your diet routine, going to a doctor and getting advice on something like get the ball started this month, talk to the appropriate people, but don't wait anymore. No more procrastination is what I see with that. Um, work life balance. I, I didn't even read this as a money issue, uh, but the two of pentacles usually has to do with finding the appropriate balance in your life. And uh, whether that's work life or something else, make sure that you're getting what you need and you're not putting something to the expense of something else. Um, it could also be work love balance. Something's off a little bit and this is your chance to get your footing uh, as well. Let me see if there's anything else here. Pretty good cards overall, I have to say. Um, the, the, the great bear or this judgment card can also be a brush with death. Uh, maybe you lost someone in your life. Maybe you had a close health call and this is your wake up call. And the star card is also connecting with spirit. It can be an NDE for those of you that have had a near death experience, but it can also just be that um, your spiritual awakening has sort of like popped into a new gear and you're gonna do something with that. Overall, there's nothing bad with this card, just heightened awareness, do something with that awareness, okay? Let's move on to wealth. Um, so we have trust the universe. I like this card quite a bit. Um, we see what looks like a spiral galaxy there. And um, basically here, trust in, I would say, universal timing and synchronicities. Synchronicities happen when we are at the right time, at the right place. We've called into existence an opportunity. It could be love. It could be work. It could be a big life-changing move in your life. Um, but what's necessary in that moment is preparedness. I'm ready to take this leap. Um, and also awareness. This is, this is something important. I can't, I can't underestimate this. So what I want you to focus on in your life right now are the synchronicities, or if, if you haven't yet created one, the signposts along the way that are leading you towards something different, okay? Um, really pay attention. Put those jackrabbit ears up and listen to what you are receiving because it feels to me like there's a big opening for you. And I agree, by the way, because we have a rebirth card here. So if you've had a really tough year in work, finances, et cetera, then there's a new door that's opening. And then we have the star card, which is potentially one of the best ways you can end the spread and the outcome. The world is equally as good. I'll take that or I'll take any pentacle, like king of pentacles or something like that. But the fact that you've got like a rebirth card and then the star card tells me that you're, uh, you're headed into a really nice path, okay? So keep your eyes and ears open and don't be afraid to step into this great opportunity that wants to present itself. Some things that could be hindering you again, um, feeling like you're, you're lost or you've lost your focus a little bit, uh, being too conservative, uh, so much so that you're afraid to take a risk, take a calculated risk when you're ready, you know, do it in a smaller way, test the waters a little bit. Um, and let's see what else is coming through here for wealth. Um, okay, yes, it's a reset. So for some of you, if you have experienced something like a layoff, bankruptcy, um, just some really difficult times when it comes to getting what you need, fight for acknowledgement, make sure that you're happy with the opportunities coming your way, and then be authentic. Remember that you I don't feel like you can fake it this month when it comes to showing someone if you care or don't care. So it's better to somehow just be authentic and, and uh, put it out on the table. That's gonna save you time, it's gonna save them time as well. Uh, we do have, I forgot we had the Nine of Pentacles here at the beginning. So I wanna really see what the, the balancing is between the Nine of Pentacles and the Two of Pentacles. I think for some of you, it's just a feeling of like, how, how much do I wanna share with someone and where do I wanna go? But, but because we had the Two of Pentacles, I'll, I'll still take a look at resource balancing when I go to the soul path in a few minutes here. All right, uh, let's move on. Let's go to, I think everybody's favorite or most people's favorite, love and relationships. So the caption on that on Kuan Yin is uh, care and compassion. Let me put on my glasses for the lower portion. Choose to be love, do what is right for everyone involved, offer a helping hand. That's a really powerful statement. Choose to be love, not to be in love, but to be love. Um, so love is the currency of the universe. It is the highest kind of like exchange that we can give. Love yourself, create a loving space for others. And if that is not accepted, you are not in the right place. You can do better. Um, so love yourself and be compassionate with yourself and forgive yourself because forgiveness was a piece of this as well. We see all these beautiful lotus blossoms around her. 
I, I uh, recently talked about the lotus flower and the lotus has to go through all these levels of difficulty, you know, the mud at the bottom, all the sort of uh, water uh, until it gets up to the top and can blossom. And just like an iceberg, we don't know what people have been through. You don't even understand how deep your soul goes, how many lifetimes you've lived. So um, there's this unfurling that wants to happen. Just trust that you've set yourself up to get there, okay? Let's take a look at those uh, three areas that I normally like to look at. We'll start off for people that are currently in a relationship. So if you're in a relationship right now, as I said, it's a little bit of power dynamics that are coming through. If your partner's coming through with the sun card reversed, uh, it's a divine masculine card, but in the reverse, it can mean an adult that's acting like a child. Um, and it can also mean an adult that was somehow hurt when they were a child, so they're reliving parts of themselves because of that. So it, um, someone's stuck, stuck in a feedback loop. So if that's a partner or a friend of yours, try to snap them out of that or help them get through that. As an aspect of your own personality, it's saying that you need to heal yourself. Again, the inner child. Maybe you've put aside a really important dream for yourself. Um, your partner should support you in that path. Let them know what it is. Let them know that you've supported them before. Give them space and opportunity to be there for you as well. Um, you do not have to do anything alone. And the important thing this month is striking the proper balance. So we'll be looking at that when I go into the soul path, but you should be able to do that. We have two stars here, and I'm just seeing it now because the cards are named differently. But um, if we turn these both up right, there's two strong personalities. So for those of you in a re relationship, we have two stars. We have the sun and we have the star. The only difference in this is that this one's a lot closer and this one's a little bit further out. So we're looking at some sort of distancing energy, but what, uh, the size is also an illusion here. So when it comes to who's more important, who's more powerful, eh, you're both the same. There's just sort of this difference in luminosity and difference in expression. So um, if you feel like you're being outshined by your partner, you're not, um, or you don't have to be, let's put it that way. And vice versa, if your partner is afraid of you shining because it makes them less, that's not true. You're both stars. I've talked about this before. If you're in the orbit of another star, you are either a really strong planet or you're a star. Um, so you have that capacity and, and up in the, the heavens, double and triple star systems are quite common. So you do not have to mute your light, nor does your partner. Um, you should both be able to have moments of brightness of luminosity. Um, so focus on that and embrace that and allow that, okay? You may also be with someone who's so similar to you that it's difficult. It's difficult sometimes to just give and take. So that's gonna be the important thing here is figuring out, let's not fight, right? We're on the same page here. I feel like you can have a positive outcome because of the star, but there is a decision and it is a sort of reckoning. Are you gonna stay on the same path or are you going to try again? Are you gonna do something else? If you've loved and lost, this is also a rebirth. This is a chance for something new. So um, for those of you in love, there's a chance to repair. There's a little bit of work with, with regards to power and, um, and having both people feel like they're supported. I think that's the most important thing, but there is love to be had. So that's the important thing. If you are looking for love this month, um, one of the things that's possibly getting in the way is traditional values um, and expectations. So perhaps your mom or dad said you have to marry a certain occupation type, like marry a doctor or a lawyer. What, what crazy advice is that, by the way? How does that equate to happiness? How do you know if that's going to be a good person or a bad person? And nowadays, how do you know that they're going to actually make a lot with, with malpractice and everything else? We're, we're setting children up to, to value the wrong things. So you could just tell them that's, that's, not a, that's not a great assessment of the soul or someone's worth. That just tells me they went to school or they have money and they decided to do this. So um, don't, don't just kind of follow in the footsteps of your parents or in the expectations of your parents. Don't put pressure on people in your life if you're a parent and your kid is an artist. And you're like, well, that's nice, but you better figure out how to pay the bills. Um, I actually know someone who said that, and that makes no sense. Um, if you're an artist, you're an artist. Um, you, should, you should do that and not worry so much, especially if a kid is young, they'll figure that out. So um, let someone express themselves. Um, you allow yourself to express yourself. Allow for exploration to happen. Don't fall into the categories. This actually works for those in love too, but don't limit. Don't sort of like box things in. It's so ridiculous. Um, 
One of the things that could be standing in the way is a lot of work because we have the five of wands card here. The other one is just simple disbelief. This person is quote unquote out of your league or you're out of their league, whatever. These are just imaginary things. But if you feel good around them and you're worried about what people think because you're with them, um, because of money, status, age, gender, et cetera, et cetera, really go deep into that and think, is it is it because of me or is it because of the collective energy around me? Because you could be missing out on something. And there's definitely a chance this month to find a deeper love because we have the lovers, we have a sun, the sun, which is a star, and then we have another star. So two stars to me are really powerful, but there is a, a sort of restrictive or a traditional energy around that that you'll have to figure out uh, why it's there. Uh, so water sign could be coming through for some of you as well. Nice, playful energy could be a nice addition to your life if you're looking for it. If you're not focused on love, that's great. Um, you still are going to have a lot of people that want to hang out with you or want to hire you or want to be around you. And you have that sort of viral energy that I talked about. Your words and actions will go far. So you still have people that are loving you. Um, so it doesn't have to be sexual, sensual, relationship, et cetera. Um, it's really good time for business, actually. So good for you. Set up a structure. This, this time, I actually like the Hierophant because that's going to help you get organized, get the work done, love the work while you're doing it, and don't hold on to it too long. And then something great will happen. Okay? So... That's kind of the energy for those of you that are single and happy. Let's wrap up the expanded forecast and we'll move on to the next piece. Um, we have the owl card here in the uh, destiny position. Destiny is helping you see your current trajectory, one which you can actually change because it's not written in stone. Um, with the owl in reverse, we're looking at the eyes and the ears, really the eyes, because that's what I think of when I look at this bird of prey. So are you paying attention to what you're seeing? Are you also going after what you need? Because it is a bird of prey, it's a hunter. So this is requiring action on your part. So keep your eyes open and go and get it started. Again, with that kind of energy of the fool, which we actually saw here in the star too. This, that's, you know, the fool is set out on its journey and it's trusting its own North Star to lead it. So um, the, the owl is very much in alignment with that. All right. Let's take a look at blessings and blocks, and then I will do um, my view, like basically my soul path questions here, and then I'll have you vote on a poll while I'm doing that. All right, so blessings for the month ahead, things that you can look forward to, things that you can embrace. What's, what's the good news, basically? So let's take a look at blessings. All right, so we have the 10 of arrows. Um, and this is interesting here, it's instruction. Again, wands on this are bows. And I like how this particular illustrator and deck creator has shown us that we can learn from our mistakes. Um, so in this particular one, instead of seeing someone on the ground feeling completely uh, like, oh my God, nothing's going to work out, uh, we're brushing ourselves off and starting again. So that's a really cool message. Um, <laughs> Really cool message. So learn from your, oh, we don't even need to call them mistakes, just learn from the past and aim smarter and sharper in the future, right? And I think it's it's gonna be a really nice path for you. Don't be afraid to connect with a wiser source in your life, some sort of a, um, a really, a good sort of mentor, or if there's someone that can kind of yield or, or, or give you some additional sort of advice, that's great. But anyway, the 10 of arrows in this is saying, take, take all that stuff that's been difficult that we saw here, this person sort of picking up the pieces and then sharpen your, your focus and try one more time. There's so many, I mean, because there's bows and arrows in this, it's really about taking aim. So uh, don't give up. Everything you did, every disappointment led you to this moment, led you to this opportunity. It's leading you to a synchronicity. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Rejection on a cosmic scale can actually be protection or redirection. So you're being redirected. And this could also be an ancestor behind you because uh, we actually got the ancestor here. So that can be, you know, grandfather, grandmother, someone in spirit that's trying to kind of like help you learn from their mistakes. So you can lean into that energy if you want it. Want it. Um, so anyway, I like what I see here for you. Um, it's telling me that the blessing is in disguise. The blessing is someone saying no to you. It's something not happening in the timing that you want. 
because when it does come around the next time, it's going to be better and you're going to be better prepared because you appreciate it. So the blessing is a rejection is, and it's going to help you understand what you want next time around. All right, let's take a look now at potential block, what to avoid. Let's see what is coming through that could be a potential pitfall for you. All right, we have <laughs> the the hair came through here. Um, so queen of uh, queen of bows, so queen of wands, overthinking things. The card is reversed. So not listening to your intuition. There we go. Perfect. It's our totem. Um, <laughs> couldn't have planned it better if I tried. So are you listening to yourself? Are you paying attention to things? Are you being too afraid? Any of these things could actually hold you back. So trust what you hear. Trust what you see. Move in the appropriate time, because if you overthink, if you put the blinders on, if you plug up your ears, you're missing an opportunity. Um, so the block is not trusting yourself, is not trusting the intuition. And so there we go, a big, big jackrabbit or hare. Perfect, it literally is the hare, which is the symbol for today. So we love that card. I like that this one is kind of just gently, very much like temperance, taking that first step. Speaking of Queen of Wands, probably my one of my favorite leadership cards because the Queen of Wands can do anything um, and can also create something when there's a lack of something. Usually in a traditional Queen of Wands card, you would see her in the desert with a sunflower and a black cat by her side. And basically she's creating abundance in a desert of opportunity. So even if you haven't seen good news in a while or something positive in a while, the Queen of Wands is saying, yeah, but I know how to fix that. So trust that, okay? And then move quickly. That's why we have the hair coming through. Don't delay. So two really cool symbols. One, saying I'm gonna learn from past mishaps or mistakes. It's actually been redirection. The other one is even though I've been through that, I need to trust myself. I didn't do something wrong. I've just been waiting for the right opportunity. And when it comes, I can't doubt myself. I've actually been setting myself up for that synchronicity, okay? Really, really cool symbols. All right, let us uh, let me put up the viewer's choice poll and then I will uh, take a look at the, um, the soul path. But first thing we're gonna look at is viewer's choice. So there's a couple of things that I wanna put. Give me a second to type it and then it's gonna be something that you can vote on. So viewer's choice. The first thing as I'm looking at these cards that I'm seeing is um, how to really step into the energy of the star. So. Uh, how, how to not hold back. So I'll just put stepping into the star energy. It's basically being yourself. Uh, the other thing that I wanna look at here is power dynamics because that definitely came up with the, the sun card in the center. So balancing power dynamics. And let me see if there's one more that I wanna vote on just so you have a couple of options. I'm gonna look at the resource thing on my own. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Okay, um, and if you don't pick some of these, I may still do them in the soul path because this one I think is important. But trusting your, uh, well, it is really kind of trusting your intuition here because we have the, the great bear card. So let me take a look at this one. Trusting your intuition. All right, so I'm going to uh, put this out for all of you to vote on. Sometimes you ask me where it is, it's gonna be right at the top, where, where not at the bottom of the chat, but you'll actually see little thermometers or little bars that you can tap on. So should show up for you in a moment or two. Um, there we go, I can see it now. And uh, you can start clicking and I'll give you a couple moments while I'm looking at the next question. I wanted to look a little bit at the, um, the two of pentacles that came through because it is, it is kind of like a mating card, like I said, for, for hairs, they basically do that to get someone's attention and hopefully figure out if that person's interested. So what I wanna look at for you, we're gonna look at it two ways. I'm gonna say, is the opportunity in front of you, is the person or the job or whatever this, this sort of chalice is, because we got the vessel here, is it going to be um, worth your time and energy? And then I wanted to see if there's any advice on resource management since we did have a two of pentacles. It's in fears, um, but I still wanna look at the two things. So first of all, whatever or whoever's coming in, good or bad, what's it all about? All right, so we have the Knight of Wands, um, which is really interesting because we got the Queen of Wands just a moment ago. 
This one is the fox here. Um, <laughs> love the fox. Uh, so when I'm looking at this, I would say it's it's good, but I think that there's a lot that you two have in common. So when we have two wands cards that are reversed, it's two people that have a very similar way of thinking, very traditional way, which falls through on the, uh, the hierophant that we had at the top. So both of these uh, animals are known for listening. Uh, so you just need to listen to the other person. It's back to what I talked about at the beginning. So I actually like what I'm seeing here. Um, the only thing with the fox is it can be sly. So I would say, make sure that you call anything out. What I saw in my meditation and my dreams earlier was you would be able to catch someone if they were trying to overstate, oversell, etc. cetera. So um, call them out if you need to. But I think that you will be able to work it out and figure it out together, okay? Let's take a look now at the second piece was, which was um, basically, is there any messages about time, energy, and resource management? And then I'll go to the poll. Um, so we have queen of uh, vessels. We're getting a lot of really cool court cards here. We didn't get them when I pulled the main cards, but it's coming through as well. Um, the queen of vessels is, is kind of cool because uh, I, I don't know if it's salmon, but like salmon, it's streaming. It's going against the stream. It's it's flowing upstream uh, or swimming upstream. So one thing that I would say for you, and the card was reversed, is um, you shouldn't have to force it unless it's something you really want to do. And if you want to, you can do it, but it has to be something you want. So we've all been in situations in our life where we just know that it's going to take a little bit extra, but it's worth it. So maybe you're stretching a little bit to you know to buy a house or um, you're going to pull an all-nighter because you want to get something done and impress your boss or whatever. If you want to do it, do it, but only do it because you want to. If you're being pushed into it or you're constantly swimming upstream, um, it's not worth it. It's counterproductive. And the salmon do this and they're done. So it's a big expenditure of energy. So you don't want to do that. Um, don't burn yourself out. That's the one thing that I would say. And that's why the two of pentacles came through. We can pick one or two of these moments in time, but you can't do that constantly. We're not meant to expend that much energy. It's like a star. The really big ones burn up fast. It's the little ones like our sun that are kind of, you know, mid-sized, yellow. Um, they're not going to, uh, they, they last longer, basically. The other ones, they're, they're, they're on fire and you may remember them, but they're quick. So you want to last longer. Um, so like I said, even with the salmon, I believe they go upstream, they mainly die. So we don't want that. Um, uh, you don't want to kind of use that much energy. Okay, let's go to the viewer's choice poll. Let me go ahead and end it, put on my glasses to make sure I can read it. When it comes up here, I'm gonna shuffle the cards while it's coming through, and we'll see what you guys chose for me to look at today. All right, so viewer's choice, 49% chose stepping into the star energy, which is cool. All right, and then uh, we're gonna still probably look at trusting your intuition because it was only about 10% less, and plus I'm interested in that one because we saw the uh, saw the the Great Bear card or the Judgment card. So I'm going to look at that maybe in a separate way. But okay, stepping into the star energy. So what this is really about is making sure that you're not afraid to be yourself, to wear your heart on your sleeve, to say something bold. So why can you like why aren't you doing it, and how can you do it? Would be my question. Okay, so um, this is a really cool uh, Two of Swords, which was what I talked about in my channeled messages. Um, the Two of Swords is indecision. Uh, and what we see here is that money isn't all, or, or what people think is worth more isn't always what's best. Much like uh, the Egyptian myth where your heart is kind of weighed by a feather. Um, you have to kind of think to yourself, can I live with myself with this decision? How do I feel about this? Does this lift me up or does this weigh me down? And we have two symbols on either side of the scales that do a little bit of uh, you know, one or the other. So for you, you may choose the feather. It's the lighter path. It's the one that makes you feel freer, even if it isn't giving you the money, the popularity, the acclaim. So stepping into the, the star this month is really about trusting what feels lighter and brighter. And it may take time for people to see it, but they may see it eventually because remember what I said, actions speak louder than words or, or basically do it, don't say it. And then the other piece was 
your actions will carry, your, your words and actions will carry. So if you're doing what you love and it feels lighter and, and you, uh, you do a better job at it, you're gonna get further, you're gonna get the recognition eventually and then people are gonna come around anyway. So you may lose a little bit at the initial portion, but in the long run, you're going to be able to gain a lot more. You can't take money with you either and you don't take titles with you when you die. You take the experiences with you. So is this experience valuable? Is it weighing you down or is it lifting you up? And if people around you can't celebrate what your star energy is, why are you with them as well? This is kind of making a choice. You have to make the choice that's best for you. Finally, as I said earlier, I do feel like you have this, this portal, this opportunity, this moment. Some of you even have someone that's interested in giving you this opportunity. It will not stick around forever. Do something with it now, um, sooner than later, okay? And now, uh, very briefly, just because it was one that I was curious about and it didn't get as much votes, but I wanna look at this. Uh, looking at judgment reversed, just how can you trust what's going on? And maybe just give you some validation for what that question of trust might be. And then we'll meditate. All right, so we have the uh, Six of Cups here, which is really cool. Uh, the card is reversed, but I love the Six of Cups. So Six of Cups for you is showing that uh, this is the inner child as well, because both the Sun and the Six of Cups are children in tarot. Um, and this is a chance to re revisit. The card actually says reunion on it at the bottom, but it's a chance to revisit or to call in the kind of person, place, or thing that feels like it's right, it's family, it's familiar. So I feel like what you're vacillating or trying to decide or juggling around, it's exactly what you want. It's calling in a really high energy and there might be some fear associated with taking that leap, but it looks really good. You and you alone have to sort of sort out the pros and the cons, but what looks like uh, it's on the other side of this rainbow is pretty darn good. Um, this can be higher love. This can be a higher opportunity. And this can just be a chance for you to successfully complete a cycle in your life too, because you're going back to the past and saying, done with that, this feels good, the inner child is playing and happy, all right? So we like that quite a bit. All right, uh, we're gonna meditate here in just a moment, and then I'm gonna answer one final question. So while I'm meditating, maybe write it down before we get started, write what your final question is, or think, just meditate on it for a little bit. Um, before we get into that, just a quick note, if you just joined, Please take a moment, um, actually not this one, <laughs> and I'd like you to just hit like and subscribe. So if you haven't done that, one like, and if you've already subscribed, you can only do it once in a lifetime, but if you've never done it, I'm really close to a milestone and you can help me get there and then we'll do something cool like a Q&A. So help me push it up to the next milestone and we'll do something cool. If you've already done it, thank you. Hit thumbs up once if you haven't, it helps with discoverability and um, I appreciate you for doing that. Again, if you missed anything that I said today, don't worry, this goes on replay right afterwards. And you can follow me on social media for recaps. And these are all my social media handles. And you can also just click on the pinned comment above. And if you want me to uh, see what you've given back today, I will say hello at the very end. You can do a super chat and I will acknowledge your contribution. If you watch it later, you can do it using thanks, which is right next to share. And I'll give you a little heart to let you know that I've seen that as well. All right, for meditation today, uh, we have the beautiful star and I feel like we need to work with that. So since you chose becoming um, the kind of stepping into the star energy, we're going to take it a step further in the meditation and you're going to, we're going to light that inner star. Okay. So let me get my singing bowl set up here. This meditation takes approximately two or three minutes, goes pretty fast. It's important. Um, it helps us kind of integrate the messages that we need to learn for today. So stick around for that. Um, and then I will answer your final question. <clears throat> All right, I want you to see yourself um, in the forest in the evening, just after the sun has gone uh, uh, over the edge of the horizon. So there's still this sort of gentle glow right at the edge of the water or right at the edge of the forest, but the stars are starting to shine through and um, maybe imagine that it's a new moon so that it's just the stars. So normally you wouldn't see them this strongly, but right now you can. And you're in a place right now where you can actually see that tail end of the Milky Way. Very few places on earth now because we have so much light pollution, but there are some places in the desert or um, up in Scandinavia or Canada. So pick a place that's a little bit remote, see yourself there and imagine that you're looking up at the beautiful stars above you, shining and twinkling and creating this sort of uh, yeah, this beautiful, it almost looks like it's a, a city, a city of stars above you. 
And I like to remind people that as we look up at the stars, we're looking up at our own past uh, because it's several million years ago that, you know, more than that, actually billion years ago or trillion years ago that all this happened. So looking back in time and space, I want you to go back into a lifetime or into a moment where you felt strong, where you felt powerful. And if you've never felt that before, remember that everything here is created from the energy of a previous star in this planet. So we are constituted from stardust at our core, at our center, we can still shine. We did it once, we can do it again. So energetically, close your eyes and with your third eye, connect to one of those higher uh, heavenly bodies up there. Imagine maybe one was a version of you in the past. So whether it still exists or not, it doesn't matter. It's an echo or a reminder of what was and what can be again. Tuning into your heart space, I want you to say some nice things to yourself, starting with, I am worth all of the wonderful opportunities that come my way. I am ready and willing to receive love and opportunities of the highest form of the highest frequency, love and abundance in the highest forms. And I now am trusting my intuition and I'm not afraid what other people think. And I want you to imagine that you are growing taller and brighter and now instead of being a human, you just see this beautiful um, energetic outline whatever shape you want it to be. It can be in a constellation, it can be in an animal totem, it can be just a really big human, um, but see this beautiful luminous object shining with the heart space so bright, or the solar plexus, since that came through as well, so bright that it also starts to um, just basically blur it out. You just see this beautiful star shining, rays of light reaching in each and every direction in each and every dimension. Imagine now that you could travel along one of those rays of light to your future state. In this moment in time while we're meditating, I want you to feel like you did it. You were able to accomplish your dream. People are happy for you. You are happy for you. It feels good. Focus on how it's going to feel and be when you accomplish your goals. And in the meantime, realize that you're still amazing no matter where you are in your journey. Take a deep breath. Allow yourself to celebrate again the possibilities and allow yourself to travel back along that ray of light back into your heart space, uh, connecting now this future self with the present self, pulling opportunities towards you like a rubber band, feeling that they could happen faster than you realize. Today, tomorrow could be the day that you start to see traction on your dreams, on your hopes, on, on your ambitions. And gently open your eyes if you haven't already. Before we get into the final question, uh, you can rub your hands together, feeling that heat, that warmth, that energy that you always have within, sealing your heart, sealing your soul with that intention that you're going to see your dream through, that you're gonna make sure that it happens. Okay, now I want you to think about what your final question is for me. It can be anything you want. Keep it to yourself, just uh, hold it in your mind, hold it in your heart. If you wanna write it out or speak it, you can do that. Let me shuffle my cards while I tap into the energy and give you a collective answer. All right, um, so we have the four of arrows. So uh, no rest for the weary here is what we see here. A couple of things for you. Things are going to happen faster than you think. We have the butterfly at the top here and the reversal of the four of swords is actually telling me that um, if you have any sort of plateau or a little bit of a, a dip in something happening, so things slowing down for, in other words, enjoy it while it lasts because I see things picking up pretty quickly. Make sure that you're not burning yourself out. Um, as I said earlier with the salmon example, um, you can't forever swim upstream. 
uh, you have to even they, even they only do it for a punctuated amount of time. So pick and choose your sprints. Don't sprint nonstop because the body can't handle that. So take proper rest and realize that things are going to start to happen quickly. We have a lot of symbols of speed, a lot of rabbits that came through jackrabbits in particular or hares. So things are going to move quickly. You need to take advantage of the rest when you can get it. Make sure that you're getting enough rest. Ultimately, the Four of Swords to me has a couple of meanings. It's not an immediate yes. Um, I would say for you, you shouldn't wait any longer for certain things. So if you've been waiting forever for something or someone, this is an impatient card in reverse. And it's saying you might have waited long enough. Check in with them. See what's going on. Uh, for, for the rest of you, it's telling me again, like, there could be something that's not sustainable where there's too much expected of you. So balance that out. We had the two of pentacles earlier. I think if you do that, if you uh, take action and you balance out any inaction or balance out anything where too much is expected of you, you'll be in a good space. Um, you're supposed to change. You're supposed to move. If you stand still, things are going to just sort of um, stagnate a little bit. Okay. So changing things up is definitely a part of that as well. Ultimately, I like it. Um, it is a recovery card and it is a grieving card. So for some of you, when you decide to make a change in your life, you grieve what you used to be, what you lost or what you went away from. One of the things that I saw in dreams that I didn't have a chance to talk about until now was basically that people can sometimes, uh, you need to sort of say goodbye to things. I saw myself saying goodbye to like an old home or something. So give yourself a chance to do that if you need to, all right? That wraps everything up for today. I hope you enjoyed today's reading. Um, I'm gonna take a moment now and say thanks to everybody who um, gave back a little bit before I do that. I saw someone say that they got my book. Thank you so much. If you'd like to get it, it's called The Luminous Ones. Um, you can purchase it on my website. You can click on the pinned link above to get more information about it. It's a sci-fi fantasy uh, book, kind of like Lord of the Rings or Dune. So it's basically for someone who enjoys digging a little bit deeper. If not, just show up here and, uh, and you're always welcome to learn a little bit more about what's coming through in the months ahead. Uh, let's go ahead now and let me take a moment just to say thanks and then we'll wrap up for today. Special thanks to Maria who's been helping me moderate today. I appreciate your help. I appreciate everybody who showed up. So let me uh, take a look at those that were kind enough to give back. And uh, just a reminder that I'll be doing Libra later this week. So let me put a quick link out to my upcoming schedule. So if you've missed anything, here you go. That's the link to upcoming videos. Um, so let's say thanks to those who gave back today. All right. So uh, first and foremost, to Shay, thank you so much for your support. Good to see you here again today. KK, thank you as well. Uh, good to see you again. Sharon Hunter, I appreciate your contribution. Joyce, thank you and hello, um, especially from the UK, it looks like with the pounds there, appreciate it. Um, Paller, thank you as well. Sarah, Crystalline, Lori, and Dana, you guys are amazing. Thank you for making this possible and making today possible. I also saw a question about uh, live polling when you're doing this. It'll show up only if you're on a computer or a mobile device that supports it. If you're watching on the TV, it won't show up. Um, as far as the weekend collectives go, you can vote for those on my community tab. But I always do a live poll in my readings and that's only gonna show up on supported devices. So if you don't see it, don't worry. The collective usually has your back. All right, everybody, take care of yourselves. I'll be back again on Thursday, again, to, uh, to look at Libra. And then on Friday, I will be doing Scorpio, same time, same place. And you can join me on Sunday for the collective. Take care of yourselves. Have a great week ahead and a great month ahead. It's been great to spend this time with you. All right, until the next time, bye-bye.